to give you a simple answer because they don't believe him. He's not going to do what he said he would do, and he's not who he says he is. And if you're like that, if you lack faith, then you don't know who you're supposed to be. Amen? Here's another way to grow. Put God's word into your mind. Key verse, Romans 10, 17. One of the first verses I actually just stuck with me. So faith, then, comes by hearing, and hearing by... Word of God. God. If we're not constantly putting the Bible into our minds, we're not going to have much faith. Uh, and it's impossible to have any faith without the Word of God. You see, the more we read about Abraham in Hebrews 11, listen to this. By faith, Ab listen, are you ready for this? By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called. He didn't say, I'm kind of busy right now. Or else, he didn't say, I don't feel like it. Or he didn't say, I don't like what you know. He didn't know. He, he obeyed as God called him to go. And he was going to a, to a straight, he was going, how many of you know his life took him to places he, he would have never have chosen to go there himself? To a strange land? Mm. They believed. And they act on the word of God because they know that if they do, they will receive whatever God has promised. That is what the people of faith have. They knew Abraham that was promised an inheritance. We've been promised an inheritance. What's the point? Abraham obeyed and he received. Listen to this. For he waited for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. You see, Abraham heard the truth of God. Amen. The truth about a future city. And he believed God. That's, listen, his belief in God resulted in obedience. I've come by this morning to tell you that if you are not being obedient, then you don't believe God. And if you're not believing God, you don't have faith. And if you don't have faith, you're not pleasing to God. And if you don't have faith, there's a distinct possibility that you're walking away for the promise of salvation. Amen. Oh. Ooh, that's me. You see, the more that we look at physical circumstances, the less likely it is that we will have faith. Am I right, Sister Robin? Sister Mickey? Some of you know the stories about what they've been going through. The whole household. Mm -hmm. The last couple of years, and I mean years. Sister Mickey comes to church. Sister Margaret, you know, you know what happened? She goes home that very day and she breaks her ankle so she can't ever come back to church for a couple of months. <laughs> that's not funny, but it is kind of now. I, listen, that's the truth. And then I didn't know. Maybe she just didn't enjoy the service. She didn't enjoy the fellowship. I don't know. She wasn't returning my call. Well, that's because she wasn't home. <laughs> she was at her daughter's house because she had broken her ankle. <laughs> My goodness, I have a whole list of things that if, listen, if I took it at face value, I'd have my feelings hurt. <laughs> I'd almost be insulted. But you know what? I was, I was persistent, wasn't I, Sister Mickey? <laughs> I, I was going to make sure that she was, listen, that she got what she came for. Because I actually asked her, what did you, what did you come for? <laughs> she, well, you know, I broke my ankle. But it wasn't just once. Later on, it happened again. Just so you know, she got rid of that old house. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. If we focus on our circumstances alone, you may have to do like I did, really, Lord. And I, what am I, I? I just got my answer. You know what he was doing? He was checking me out. <laughs> God help. <laughs> and he did knock me to the floor. Praise the Lord. And I'm standing here. I, I got up. I was standing right then. My hand up. Did you know that you can get knocked down and get up again? Amen. Some of us, we get knocked down. and Don't you love me, Lord? Wait a minute. You're in good company because the disciples didn't. Don't you care that we perish? 
What did he say to them? Ye of little faith. Whoa, 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 hold on. Don't be so harsh on the disciples. At least he recognized they had a little faith. Amen. <laughs> Come on now. And he stood on the water too. <laughs> we read the word because the more we're familiar with God's word, the more we're familiar with, listen, with what we're supposed to be, who we're supposed to be, and what he's done and what he will do. If my people who are called by my name, this is the promise, will humble themselves and pray, turn from the wicked ways, then I'll hear their okay. prayer. I gotta go back because um, I wanna get to this moving mountains. Some of you got some, This maybe this is for you. This is gonna be my closing thought of, of, of moving mountains. Some of you got things going on in your life right now. No, not some of you. Most of us. Every one of us. There's something going on in our life right now. Some of you, it doesn't seem to be so big, but if we learned about it, you say, how can you be so calm about all this? Who gives you peace? God, Jesus. I mean, think about this for a moment. It doesn't mean that you're not disturbed. It doesn't mean that you're not bothered by it. It just means that you're at peace with it. And you say, well, I, I need to have some, some of this kind of faith. You know, I want some mountain-moving faith and, and all that stuff, you know. But let's, let's look again at Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Because when we look at the verse, well, let's see. Did I, did I put that up there? No, oh, that's not what I want. Why don't you go backwards? There we go. <laughs> have faith in God. If you have faith in God and don't doubt you can tell the mountain to get up and jump into the sea. Yes, it will. Me. <laughs> Everything you ask for in prayer will be yours if you only have faith. faith. Was God specifically promising to move mountains? Some of us remember Harold, uh, <laughs> Linda, William, Lael. There were mountains up on our driveway. Yeah. yeah. And it, now, you know what happened? You know what it took? To move those mountains, it took sledgehammers and a bulldozer. <laughs> don't don't get me wrong. I actually prayed. I tried that mountain moving prayer when I knew, when we had twelve dump, dump, dump truck loads of that asphalt in our driveway, and we couldn't drive our driveway anymore. I mean, it was work. But on that way, that's that's kind of okay. That's not, there's there are things that are going on in your life that are just huge. There are insurmountable obstacles, or or maybe like in this picture here. There is, there, there is a, a, a chasm that you've got to somehow or other get across. <laughs> it's an impasse in your life. Wait a minute, is this starting to make more sense? It might not be the, a, 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 a literal mountain. Maybe you've got the same mountain that most of Americans have, a mountain of debt. And you're praying that that debt would go away. You know what I found out? If you're going to have peace about that, you're going to have to take some matters into your own hands and become a good steward of what God's given you. Amen? Amen. And it's not anything you can just decide to do one day. You need to have faith that it's going to work. And you have to have faith that God's going to empower you to get through these steps because these changes that we have to make when God shows up is never anything easy. Amen. So was God specifically promising that we're going to move a mountain? Or was he just uh, making a... a, a, a a bigger point. It says there's no record of God's people ever having a need to move a real mountain. I don't see that. But Christ let us know that Almighty God could easily do it if the oh, wait, let me back up. I want to I want to qualify what I just said. If there was a real need to move that mountain, how many think God could do it? Yeah. Yes. I mean, think about this. Chariots went into this. Chariots went into they went into the drink because God parted the seas. Amen. Amen. He's doing that a lot. So what's the deal? I mean, if if a mountain needed to be moved. And the people of God needed it to be moved. If they needed it to be moved. Usually we're wanting it to be moved because it's just in our way. It's going to make us, maybe we're going to have to climb. Or maybe we're going to have to take a little longer journey to get where we're going. The 
but there's no record of God ever moving them. Still, we all face trials. We all face these challenges that can overwhelm us. It's, they seem to be impossible spiritual mountains that God can move for us if we ask in faith. Matthew 19. With God, all things are possible. Let me tell you about faith. Faith believes that God watches over us. Faith believes that God cares for us. Faith believes that God hears our prayers. We may not know how God will work things out for us, but according to, according to Scripture, now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think of, God can answer our prayers in many ways, even yeah. in ways we never thought imaginable. There is no limit to what God can do. But just because he can doesn't mean he will. will. He tells us no to. We can't have that. <laughs> if you've got things in your life right now that have been a hindrance to you, right. maybe they're new things. Maybe they're things that have been they've been lingering for years and years. You say, you know what? I'm done with this. Lord, I believe that you can help me with this mountain. But before you pray, before you ask God. <laughs> Remember, you're not trying to appease him, you're trying to please him. Amen. Amen. And you might have you might say a prayer like this, by the way. Lord, whatever it takes, I'll do it. Be careful what you ask for. Uh, yes. Yes. yes, be careful. Or be willing to accept whatever God delivers. Mm -hmm. God says, Son, you can have what you want. Let me tell you what that did for me. It made it put me in check. It started making me, I'll say, validate or, or invalidate certain things. I had to start evaluating the things that mattered to me. And let me tell you something. I shared this, I think, on Thursday. Oh my goodness, what is this Thursday about? I should know I wrote it. Oh, yeah. We have to get real to get healed. Amen. I wish I was going to be here for that. Um, you are deep this morning. Um, are you willing to do what God wants you to go through? I said this last this last Thursday about the devils and the demons. They're purposeful. They know how to identify value. The Bible says where your heart is, there your, your treasure is also. They know how to get together and attack that which you value. Yes. I opened up with that one verse because that's exactly what happened. Mm, mm, I'm feeling this right here. Well, I, I just got to give this to you. Then we're going to pray. Jesus told the young man, sell what you have. Yes, he did. What happened? He, he, went, away he went away sorrowful. He went away sorrowful. Yeah. Let me tell you what happened in this story. What you see is that the enemy had, a, had, a, had basically blinded the man to where he valued the things that he had, the comfort he had, the surety he had in those things more than Jesus. Amen. And according to scripture, are you getting this? Mm -hmm. They got what they wanted. He went away from Jesus. Yes. What do you value? Expect there's going to be a listen. Expect there's going to be an attack, an organized attack on that which you value. That doesn't mean you shouldn't value it. That just means you need to put your value where it counts the most. Yes. Yes. Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of you love God? Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. Let's stand all over the building. If you have a need for prayer this morning.
Altars are always open, but right now, if you are right where you are, maybe you've got something that you, maybe you had an answer. Amen. Sisters? Uh. Hallelujah. Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, for your visitation today. And we certainly thank you, Lord, for the word that we've heard, Lord, that which has been revealed to us. And today, Lord, there are many other things. Many are, Our eyes are being opened that we can see things as they really are. It's about to get real. It's about to get real, God. Because we recognize you as tangible. We recognize you as something and someone who does exist. Not only do you exist, but you abide. You're here with us now. So, Lord, we cry out to you. Lord, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers, Lord. We ask this, Lord, in the lovely name of Jesus. A name that we don't take lightly. A name that's above every other name. That, God, that you would move through us, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Spirit to come today, uh, even now, Lord, to bring us ever so much closer to being in the image of your Son. And, Lord, as we, as we pray today, Lord, let us pray, uh, Lord, not just to be seen and heard, except certainly by you. But we also want to be seen and heard that we are people who depend on you. Lord, we pray aloud at times because we want to know that when the help comes, the help was of you, not of anything that we've done, but it's what you're doing through us. Father, right now, Lord, touch our sister today. Hallelujah.
somebody there that we may want to invite to come eat you know so we want to make sure we have everything that it takes so you may we're asking you to go a little extra okay just a little extra so you had three weeks from today to be planning this and you know buy a little bit this week a little bit each next week pretty soon you'll have enough to make 20 pounds of potato salad <laughs> so we do. that's my commercial